just shape the process while it went on. So in this presentation I will explain in brief what I mean with these two points, how privatization came to be chosen, and what characterized the process while it went on. But first of all, I want to underline one thing, and that is that uh, privatization is a political issue. Privatization means to transfer property uh, or production from the public sector, from the economy, to private ownership and operation. So privatization is a way of regulating property relations by changing something from state to private ownership and control. And in most electoral democracies, uh, the level of state involvement in the economy, the role and scope of the private sector, it is something that is very much disputed. It's something that political parties fight bitterly over. So privatization is not politically neutral. It's a political issue on which one's opinion is determined by political affiliation and ideological outlook. So, I will now talk a little bit about how privatization came to be chosen for Kosovo uh, and what characterized the period of international leadership over the process. First of all, privatization was chosen by international officials uh, in UNMIC and the EU pillar as Kosovo's main economic strategy, not because of the exact characteristics of the Kosovo economy, and not because of Kosovo's specific economic analysis had led to the conclusion that privatization would be the best way to handle Kosovo's specific economic challenges. Privatization was chosen for Kosovo because UNMIC was a state building operation, and all state building operations function with a certain template, a certain standard for reform, standard for political and economic reform, which it implements in state building targets. And here I have to say that the report analyzes this concept of international state building in some detail and it also explains why I see UNMIC as a state building operation. Uh, so I won't go much into this theoretical uh, details here. Um, but what I think is imp more important to say here is that state building operations, including UNMIC's model for reform, are based on the argument that um, political and economic liberalization are necessary conditions for international security. So, liberalization is at the core of this state building uh, model's uh, template for reform. So, on the economic field, this state building operations um, reform model, it calls for typically privatization and free trade. Um, and this was why privatization was chosen for Kosovo. Since UNMIC was a state building operation, all state building operations implement a template of liberal economic reform in their targets. Privatization was predetermined to be the approach to Kosovo's economy for international officials. It was a preset choice. So, privatization was chosen for Kosovo without comprehensive economic discussion on why or whether this was necessary or the best strategy for Kosovo's economy and without giving anyone from Kosovo real decision-making power. So while following this predetermined state building model, international officials planned, prepared and executed privatization in a technical way with a functionalistic language, functionalistic approach as if this was a technical matter. I think this is interesting because privatization is not a technical matter, it's a political issue. Privatization is not politically neutral. It's an issue which in democracies are and should be debated, analyzed and questioned. It should be the subject of disagreement, political engagement and disputes. But in Kosovo it was not. International officials chose, prepared and led Kosovo's privatization from 1999 to 2008 by removing the issue from the field of democratic contestation and debate and into their own hands, talking about it and advancing it as something technical and undisputable and unquestionable. Um, it was one thing, though, 
that international officials did question while they were privatizing in Kosovo. And this was the following. How could I implement this uh, ready set choice of privatization without risking to be held accountable for the process, without risking to be sued for privatizing? So while UNMIC state building template for economic liberalization called for quick and large scale privatization, it was important for international officials to do this in a way that would not backfire um, by making themselves responsible for the process. So this aim of speedy and risk-free privatization was complicated by the Kosovo environment. More specifically, it was Kosovo's recent history um, as part of socialist Yugoslavia and also um, um, its period of repression uh, from Serbia, especially during the period of Milosevic, that brought up some questions that complicated this aim of privatization. An important issue um, was related to the legal ownership of the enterprises that were scheduled for privatization. Because privatization means selling property to private owners. But in Kosovo, international officials were not sure who actually owned this property, this enterprises that will be sold. And without establishing a legal framework where this would be clarified, or at least a legal framework that would be protecting international officials from claims regarding ownership, they did not dare to start on privatizing. So, on a general level, the international officials involved in privatization in Kosovo, they had to confront the concept of social ownership, which was a unique concept from the former Yugoslavia. It doesn't have any historical or global equivalent. Um, social property, it was, it's, um, it was not supposed to be possible to define it in legal terms, because social property was supposed to be owned by everyone, but no one in particular. And that is not exactly the legal definition of, of ownership. So international officials preparing for privatization was troubled by this. How could they define legally who really owned this social property? In addition, they were troubled by Kosovo's unresolved status at the time, because even if it should be decided that the social property was public property somehow, it was not clear who this public authority would be? Would it be Kosovo's leadership? Would it be UNMIC? Would it be Serbia? This was what troubled international officials when trying to define legal ownership over this social property. Um, another thing um, that complicated the issue of ownership over Kosovo's SOEs was that the Milosevic regime had already tried to undertake some sort of privatization in Kosovo during the 90s. Although this process was dubious at best, because it was conducted in a manner that is discriminated, particularly against Albanians, um, international officials were worried about being sued from the owners that had bought property during the period of Milosevic. So all of this complicated the issue of ownership uh, and uh, made international officials worried about starting on privatization before these issues had been clarified. Um, Besides these ownership issues, there was also a question of, of UNMIC's mandate. Like, how far did the scope of UNMIC's authority go on the field of property rights? UNMIC's mandate expressed that it was supposed to administer property in Kosovo, but not necessarily sell it. So this was also a, an issue that complicated the, the aim of privatizing in Kosovo for international officials. So, this report explains that although Pillar 4 was responsible for economic reconstruction and development in Kosovo, and privatization was Pillar 4's main activity, it was not primarily economic considerations that shaped this decade of uh, internationally led privatization. Instead, what dominated the international officials in charge of the economy in Kosovo were legal considerations. So not economy, economic, but rather legal considerations. How to privatize without being held responsible? How to privatize without being sued? So 